After the inhabitants of a small town lose their lives in a sinister way, the police start investigating a clown while trying to get rid of a group of freaks who have just arrived in town. Today we're going to recap the story of the series, American Horror Story, Freak Show, from 2015. In 1952, in the town of Jupiter, Florida, a milkman enters Mrs. Tattler's house to deliver a package and finds the woman already eliminated on the kitchen floor. Believing that the culprit is still in the house, the man goes upstairs with a rolling pin in his hand and finds the woman's daughters hiding in the closet. Immediately, the Siamese twins are taken to hospital and that same day, news of the existence of the two sisters spreads and Elsa goes to the hospital to find them. That afternoon, a couple are having a picnic in the park when a dark clown appears and attacks them. While Molly is passed out, Troy ends up being eliminated with several knife blows and, when she wakes up, the young woman flees in desperation, but is pursued by Twisty. In the early hours of the morning, another couple is attacked by the clown, who strikes them until he takes their lives. As the days go by, new cases of disappearance are reported to the police, among them Molly and an eight-year-old young man called Corey. The pair are trapped inside a trailer in the middle of the forest and, every now and then, Twisty shows up to try and cheer them up with his cheap tricks. When he realizes that his victims aren't smiling, the man goes berserk and starts destroying everything around him. When she arrives at the room where the twins are staying, Elsa is amazed because she didn't think it was possible for two people to share the same body. The woman then begins to question the sisters about what happened the night before and they tell her that a man broke into their house. However, when he realized that the family had nothing of value to take, the thief became furious and attacked Mrs. Tattler. However, Elsa doesn't believe this story and claims to know that it was the twins who eliminated her own mother. The woman owns a freak show and invites Betty and Dot to become members of her show. At first, Dot refuses to go, unlike Betty who soon sympathizes with the idea. However, when Elsa threatens to hand them over to the police, the sisters decide to accompany her to the circus. When they arrive at their new home, they meet other people who also have some kind of anomaly and end up becoming close to Ethel, the bearded woman. That night, just before Betty and Dot make their first appearance, a detective shows up to arrest them on suspicion of a horrific crime. Seeing the man referring to the twins as monsters, Ethel's son Jimmy, who has malformed hands, is furious and slashes the policeman's neck with a penknife. He then frees the Siamese and enlists the help of his friends to get rid of the detective's body. Hours later, the show is about to start and only two people show up to watch. The truth is that Gloria Mott bought all the tickets that night to reserve the audience exclusively for her son, Dandy, a spoiled young adult who can't wait to see the monsters live. At the end of the show, Dandy and Gloria offer a large sum of money to buy the Siamese sisters, but they refuse to leave the circus because they consider it their new home. At that moment, Elsa kicks the two out of her tent and says that the freaks who live there are her family. That early morning, Jimmy and the other monsters in the circus join forces to put an end to the policeman's body and they have no idea that, a few meters away, Twisty is watching them all. The next morning, the police go to the circus to inform Elsa about a serial killer who is on the loose in the city of Jupiter. As a result, people are avoiding the streets and all establishments have lost their customers. Then the Siamese sisters appear and the police warn Elsa to be careful, as they are the main suspects in having eliminated Mrs. Tattler. However, the woman defends them and the officers report the disappearance of a detective, then insinuate that Elsa's freaks are involved in the case. However, as they have no proof of charges, the pair decide to leave. In the city center, when an employee arrives at the coffee shop where he works, he finds his boss eliminated and, at that moment, becomes another victim of the clown. Afraid that the detective's body will be found, Jimmy decides to burn it to get rid of all the evidence of the crime, but he keeps the badge because he knows it won't be destroyed by the fire. The next day, a couple arrive at the circus and have a meeting with Elsa. Del is a man known for being extremely strong and Desiree is a hermaphrodite woman. Both of them are there to become attractions in the horror show and Elsa decides to take them in, as she knows the couple have nowhere else to go. Dandy is frustrated at not being able to buy the Siamese twins, so his mother decides to surprise him and hires Twisty to keep him company. Now Dandy can finally have a friend as odd as him and decides to investigate what that clown is carrying in his bag. At that moment, the man finds traces of the last crime Twisty committed and ends up being attacked by him. Seeing the young man passed out, the clown runs away and returns to his trailer in the forest, but is followed by Dandy. While Twisty was away, Molly and Cory put together an escape plan and, when the hooded beast enters the cage with the head of one of his victims in his hands, the young woman attacks him with a piece of wood. Immediately, the pair run off into the forest and the clown's mask falls off, revealing the deformity of his mouth. During the escape, Molly meets Dandy and asks him to help her escape. But instead of taking her to safety, the man grabs her and drags her back to the trailer. 
When she discovers that new members have joined the circus, Ethel soon realizes that the guy who has just arrived is Jimmy's father, whom she hasn't seen for many years. Dell never bothered to find out about his son, in fact, the man tried to eliminate Jimmy when he was still a baby. Ever since, Ethel has harbored a deep hatred for Dell. Determined to earn his place as a normal person, Jimmy calls his friends to a diner in town and they all sit down at the counter to place their orders. It doesn't take long for the young man to realize that the other customers are annoyed by his presence, but he refuses to leave. Seeing the freaks occupying public spaces, Dell is furious and drags Jimmy out of the restaurant. He then attacks him with a series of punches. Determined to get rid of him, Jimmy puts the detective's badge on Dell's tent and makes an anonymous tip to the police. However, Dell had already realized the setup and placed the object in Meep's tent, who ends up being taken to the police station. Hours later, the police return and dump Meep's body in front of the circus. Seeing his friend lifeless, Jimmy begins to cry and feels guilty about what happened. When Halloween arrives, inspired by Twisty, Dandy sews a clown costume and, in the evening, goes to visit Dora, the employee who works in the family home. Seeing that young man with a knife in his hands, the woman says she's not afraid of him, because she's known Dandy since he was a child. Furious, he walks towards Dora, but she confronts him and all his courage goes down the drain. Meanwhile, Twisty walks around the city looking for new victims and breaks into the house of a girl who is terrified of clowns. However, when he sees the girl's older brother at her bedroom door, the man changes his target and decides to capture Mike. Since he didn't have the courage to attack Dora, Dandy decides to pay a visit to the prisoners in the trailer and tries to attack Molly with a table knife. However, as the girl is trapped inside a cage, he can't reach her and decides to tie the knife to the end of a stick. Then, before the young man could complete his evil plan, Twisty showed up with yet another victim for his collection and put Mike in the cage with the others. After several days stuck in that trailer without food, Corey is now so weak that he can barely move. However, Molly is determined to get out of that place alive and once again attacks the clown when he enters the cage. At this point, she runs away and reaches the road, but Twisty manages to catch up with her and knocks her to the ground. Hearing Molly's screams, Jimmy and Maggie, the new circus member who claims to be a psychic, see the girl being taken into the forest and decide to investigate. When he arrives at the maniac's hideout, Jimmy realizes that he is responsible for the crimes in Jupiter and decides to call the police. However, before they have a chance to do so, Maggie and the young man are beaten up by Dandy and taken away to take part in a bizarre Halloween act. Maggie is about to be sawn in half when Jimmy manages to get up and attacks Dandy. After untying her hands, he helps Maggie escape and asks her to flee with the other prisoners. At that moment, Jimmy ends up being captured by Twisty and collapses with a blow to the neck. The clown is about to eliminate him when the ghost of Edward Mordrake, a freak who lived in the 1800s, appears. Edward often pays a visit to the world of the living on Halloween in search of a soul to be part of his spiritual freak show. He then orders Twisty to remove his mask and asks the clown to tell the story of how he got that way. In 1943, the madman worked in a traveling park and loved to cheer up children. Working alongside him were some freaks who didn't like Twisty and would take any opportunity to play tricks on him. As a result, the clown decided to quit his job at the circus and started working making toys. However, due to the rumors that those freaks spread about him, Twisty could no longer work with what he loved and decided to take his own life. After failing in his attempt, he donned a frightening mask and became an evil clown. Upon hearing this sad story, Edward decides to eliminate Twisty and steals his soul, taking him to be part of his freak show in hell. Minutes later, Dandy shows up and finds the clown's body. When he realizes he's eliminated, the young man steals his mask and, the next morning, Jimmy and Maggie make a statement to the police. The police are now looking for the second clown who disappeared, because Molly and the children were the only ones who saw his face. When Jimmy returns to the circus, a group of townspeople show up to thank him for saving the prisoners and, for the first time, all the freaks are treated like normal people. When he gets home in the morning, Dandy decides to continue what he started the night before and cuts Dora's neck. At this point, the possessed man feels fully realized and, when his mother finds the employee's body, he makes it look like someone broke into the house during the night and attacked the woman. However, Gloria knows her son very well and soon realizes that he was guilty of the crime. Determined to save her son's skin and prevent him from being arrested, Gloria decides to dig a grave in the garden of her house and plant a flower bed on top. That day, Stanley arrives in town and claims to be a talent scout working in Hollywood. However, the truth is that he and Maggie make their living selling rare pieces to museums and are there looking for a freak to sell. When she meets this supposed manager, Elsa sees a chance to become a star and puts herself together to demonstrate her musical talent. However, when she goes to meet Stanley, 
She sees him taking the Siamese to a picnic and feels jealous. The man's plan is to poison them with cupcakes and sell their heads to the museum, but Dot refuses to eat sweets because she wants to keep in shape for when she becomes a celebrity. That night, Dandy goes to a nightclub in search of his new victim and meets Andy, Del's secret case. Despite being married to Desiree, Del sneaks around with other men and, that night, ends up having an argument with Andy. When he gets home, he finds his wife and she reveals that she has discovered that he is Jimmy's father. After learning that her husband never gave a damn about his own son, Desiree decides to leave him and moves into Ethel's trailer. Meanwhile, Dandy takes Andy to Twisty's old trailer and, after putting on the clown's mask, the young man eliminates his victim with a knife. He then rips all the limbs off the young man's body to get rid of the evidence and returns home covered in blood. Hours later, Gloria receives a visit from Elsa, who has gone there to sell the twins, so that she can get rid of the competition. The woman then returns to the circus and begins to prepare for her trip to Hollywood, while Jimmy and the others wonder why Betty and Dot have left. At that moment, the twins are at the Mott Mansion with Dandy and the young man is doing everything he can to win them over because he wants to marry them. Unlike Dot, Betty falls easily in love with her suitor, but Dot plans to have surgery to separate herself from her sister's body and knows that Dandy has plenty of money to pay for the procedure. One day, the madman goes to a store to buy women's items and meets Paul, who realizes that he's buying twice as much. When he meets Jimmy, the man tells him what he saw and reveals his suspicions that Elsa has sold the twins to Dandy. Noticing that his efforts to win Dot over aren't working, the man freaks out and Betty realizes that her suitor isn't exactly who she thought he was. As the twins have disappeared, Stanley and Maggie need to take another freak in their place, so they decide to capture Ma Petite and Maggie puts her in a glass jar in order to drown her. However, when faced with the innocence of the little girl, who believes it's all just a joke, Maggie decides not to go through with the plan and asks Jimmy to run away from the circus with her. The problem is that Stanley is now planning to eliminate Jimmy in order to steal his hands and take them to the museum. When he reads Dot's diary and discovers that the young woman dislikes him, Dandy is heartbroken and his thirst for blood resurfaces. Just then, Jimmy rings the doorbell and the man lets him in, because he knows that the young man has gone there looking for the twins. Hearing Dandy's voice again, Jimmy realizes that he was the one in the forest with Twisty and manages to convince the sisters to return to the circus. When Betty and Dot show up, Elsa is unmasked, but Dot decides to clear the air and says she asked her to take them to the Mott Mansion. Worried about the twins, Jimmy refuses to leave with Maggie until he finds out what is really going on. Having kept Elsa's secret, Dot feels entitled to ask for something in return and asks the woman to find a doctor who can perform the surgery to separate their bodies. After being spotted by Stanley in a nightclub, Dell is blackmailed by him and has to eliminate one of the freaks to keep his secret relationship safe. So he decides to attack Ma Petite and eliminates the little one in a hug. The next day, Stanley takes the little girl to the museum and gets a lot of money for her body. Not knowing what to do to stop her son from continuing to hurt people, Gloria decides to talk to her psychoanalyst and the doctor asks her to take Dandy to his office. After Ma Petite's perishment, Ethel begins to suspect that Elsa is involved and decides to eliminate her, but the woman throws a knife right into her old friend's eye and manages to get rid of her first. She then puts Ethel in a car and crashes it to disguise her perishment so everyone believes that the woman has taken her own life. The only one who knows the truth about the crime is Stanley, because it was he who helped Elsa cover it up. Soon after the first consultation with Dandy, the psychiatrist realizes that the young man is potentially demented and says that he needs to be hospitalized, but Gloria won't allow her son to be taken away and dismisses the doctor. Hearing his mother talking on the phone, Dandy is furious to learn that she is no longer willing to cover for him, so he takes out Gloria with a fatal shot and then bathes in her blood. In an attempt to clear the air with the twins, Elsa enlists Stanley's help to find a doctor who can perform the surgery to separate their bodies. When she learns that this surgeon has been found, the woman takes Betty and Dot to a shed, where they will have to wait for the doctor to examine them. Stanley says that immediately after the examination, they will be sent to hospital, where the surgery will take place, meanwhile, Dandy continues to scatter bodies around the city and, after breaking into a mansion where a group of women are gathered, he eliminates all of them and disposes of their bodies in the swimming pool. That afternoon, Regina, Dora's daughter, arrives at the Mott Mansion and discovers that Dandy has eliminated his maid and then his own mother. For some reason, the young man allows Regina to leave and hours later, she returns to the mansion with the police. On seeing the detective, Dandy confesses his crimes once again and offers Colquitt a million dollars to help him get away with it. Immediately, the man draws his gun and eliminates Regina. That night, the detective and his men go to the circus and accuse Jimmy of the crimes Dandy committed. After the man she's in love with is arrested, 
Maggie gets drunk and reveals to Desiree that she's not a real psychic. She tells her that she is Stanley's business partner and they both survive by running scams. Upon hearing this, Desiree begins to correlate the arrival of those two with the eliminations of her friends and promises that if she finds out that Maggie is involved in those crimes, she will eliminate her. After giving up on the surgery, the twins return to the circus and decide to give all the money they've collected to Maggie to pay Jimmy's bail. Before going to the police station, Maggie asks for Desiree's help to stop Stanley from continuing to eliminate the freaks, as she deeply regrets what she has done. She then takes the woman to the museum and shows her Ma Petite's body and Salty's head. At that moment, Maggie sees Jimmy's hands in the museum and faints. As soon as Jimmy was arrested, Stanley went to the police station to offer the services of one of the best lawyers in the country, but it would cost him dearly. As he had no money to pay the fees, Jimmy made the difficult decision to sell one of his hands, as he was afraid of being eliminated as a meep. However, when he woke up in a clandestine clinic, he saw that both his hands had been removed and there was nothing more he could do. That day, Dell goes to visit his son and is extremely saddened to see the situation Jimmy is in, but discovers that it was he who agreed to undergo the surgery. So that night, when Jimmy is being taken back to prison, Dell and Eve decide to stop the car and, after getting rid of the policeman, help the young man escape. Hours later, Dell returns to his tent and finds Desiree, the woman is armed and confronts him about Ma Petite's perishment. As soon as Dell takes the blame for the crime, Elsa appears behind him and shoots him in the head. Then, with Maggie's help, the woman and her group of freaks prepare a special revenge for Stanley. At this point, the man tries to flee, but ends up being surrounded and his body is completely destroyed. When he discovers that Maggie was a traitor, Jimmy begins to hate her, but Elsa asks the young woman to help him heal his wounds and Maggie promises that she will make amends with everyone for the harm she has caused. Before being attacked, Stanley reveals that it was Elsa who took Ethel's life and this provokes a huge revolt in the freaks. That evening, the woman receives a visit from an old friend and introduces him to Jimmy. Massimo says he'll make him a new pair of hands. Meanwhile, a new magician arrives at the freak circus and performs one of his acts. The man asks for a volunteer to enter the box so that he can perform the trick of cutting her body in half and Maggie agrees to take part. What the young woman didn't imagine was that she would be sawn up for real and end up dying in there. When he is informed of Maggie's perishment, Jimmy has no reaction and learns that Elsa will be the next to be eliminated. That night, Betty and Dot go to warn the woman about the plot and she prepares to flee. Then, when Desiree and the others arrive at Elsa's tent, they don't find her, because the woman has managed to escape with Dandy's money, who bought the circus. While walking around his new property, the man encounters Stanley, or what's left of him. On his very first day as owner of the freak show, Dandy gets into a fight with the show's cast and they decide to quit. Furious at the way he has been treated, Dandy grabs a pistol and eliminates Paul, then blows Penny's head off. After that, he goes after the other freaks and eliminates every one of those who dared to challenge him. Hearing the shots, Eve picks up an axe and attacks Dandy just as he was about to eliminate Desiree. They engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but the man manages to retrieve his gun and shoots the woman in the head. Soon after, he continues his plan to eliminate Desiree, but she hides and manages to save herself. Then Dandy captures the twins and, when Jimmy arrives at the circus with his new prostheses, he finds all his friends eliminated. The only survivor is Desiree, who tells him everything that happened while the young man was away. A few days later, Dandy and Betty get married and Dot has to pretend that everything is fine, because she knows that Guy could eliminate them at any moment. After drinking a few glasses, Dandy starts to get sleepy and Desiree appears. The woman has poisoned the groom's drink and when Dandy goes to attack her, Bat shoots him. Minutes later, he blacks out and when he wakes up, he realizes that he is trapped inside a glass tank, where several liters of water are being poured. While the young man begs to be saved, the freaks watch the show and wait patiently until Dandy drowns. A few years later, Elsa finally realizes her dream of becoming a Hollywood star and thanks to Michael, her husband and manager, she manages to debut a TV show. Despite being married, her romance with Massimo continues and, realizing that she isn't happy even after fulfilling all her dreams, she decides to run away with her true love. The problem is that Massimo is ill and the doctor has only given him a month to live. A few hours later, Elsa discovers that, after leaving Jupiter, there has been an attack and all her freaks have been eliminated. The Siamese twins and Jimmy were the only survivors and became a family. That year, on Halloween, Elsa summons Edward Mordrake once again and asks him to take her to join his troop. After perishment, the woman meets all her freaks again and discovers that their lives have continued in the spirit world. Seeing her old friend, Ethel forgives her and helps Elsa prepare for her show. Even in hell, the woman has the chance to continue doing what she loves and feels happier than ever. 
So what did you think of this series? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more series recaps. See you next time.